now we are going to learn about the antigens so first question arises what is the definition of an antigen antigen is any substance which is capable of generating immune response which is specifically directed at the inducing substance now this is the main definition of the antigen but there are two important properties that should be fulfilled for a substance to be called as the antigen what are those two properties those are the number one is the immunogenicity so there should be immunogenicity in a substance for it to be called as the antigen what is immunogenicity it is the ability of a substance to induce an immune response plus the substance should also have the antigenicity for it to be called as the antigen what is antigenicity antigenicity is the ability of a substance to bind to the product of immune response so whenever these two properties are present all together then only a substance will be called as a antigen now understand it with the example suppose we have a substance a okay we have a substance a now when this substance enters in the body then two things can happen one thing is that this substance a may induce a immune response this substance a may induce a immune response the second thing that may happen is that it is not inducing any immune response okay it is not inducing any immune response now when there is induction of the immune response then of course there will be production of the antibodies at the final stage like there is formation of a anti a antibody suppose there is formation of anti a antibody so here we are seeing that this uh, substance a this substance a is able to produce the immune response and uh, the final uh, product of the immune response is anti a which will be able to bind to the antigen so antigen a will be able to bind to the anti a antibody which is the final product of the immune response so this property here this property is this property from uh, a to immune response the substance a which is producing the immune response this is called as the immunogenicity this property is called as the immunogenicity while this property by which the antigen bind to the uh, the product of the immune response that is anti a this product uh, this property is called as the antigenicity so this this property of production of immune response by a substance is called as immunogenicity and this property of binding a antigen to the product of immune response is called as the antigenicity so this is immunogenicity and this is antigenicity okay i hope i would have been able to make you understand this concept of immunogenicity and the antigenicity with respect with respect to the antigen definition okay now uh, with respect to these two definitions one very important explain why question is asked in the university exams that is all immunogenic substances are antigenic all immunogenic substances are antigenic but all antigenic substances are not immunogenic what does that mean that means if a substance is able to produce an immune response then it definitely would be able to bind to the product of the immune response like substance a it was producing immune response and it was able to bind to the final product of the immune response that was anti a antibody isn't it so that is true in all the immunogenic substances cases okay so if a substance is immunogenic that means it will definitely is going to bind to the final product of the immune response but the reverse is not true that means if a substance is binding to a product of a immune response that does not mean it has induced the uh, production of that uh, immune response okay that is that is the meaning of the uh, all antigenic substances are not immunogenic now how can you explain this this can be explained with the concept of the hepten okay so this whole concept of the hepten is used to explain explain this uh, uh, line that all immunogenic substances are antigenic but all antigenic substances are not immunogenic now what is the meaning of a hepten hepten is nothing but a low molecular weight substance which cannot induce the immune response but can bind to their antibody or to the t cell receptors that means these antibody and the t cell receptors are what these are nothing but the uh, final product of the immune responses okay these antibodies the t, t cell receptors are the final products of the immune responses the hepten is able to bind to that final product of immune response but it itself is not able to induce the immune response see here it is written in the definition also that which cannot induce immune response cannot indu induce immune response okay so they are able to bind to the final product of the immune response that means they are antigenic okay 
they are antigenic but they cannot induce the immune response that is they are not immunogenic although they are antigenic but they are not immunogenic okay that was what is asked in the explain why question that all uh, antigenic substances are not immunogenic explain why so how can we explain this this can be explained with the help of the hapten concept okay so what are the examples of some of the hapten sometimes this hapten is asked as a short note uh, question in your university exam so you should be able to write the definition and what are the some of the examples of the haptens the examples include the dinitrophenol compound penicillin is a type of hapten then aniline dye these all are the some of the examples of the hapten now one thing to note here is that uh, all the haptens although are antigenic and not immunogenic okay all the haptens are antigenic but not immunogenic but they can become immunogenic when they combine with a larger protein molecules these are called as the those larger protein molecules are called as the carrier so whenever a protein molecule is combined with or conjugated with a hapten that makes the hapten immunogenic okay and uh, that protein molecule is called as the carrier now this was explained or this was experimented by the carl landsteiner uh, when uh, the scientists injected dinitrophenol then no antibody was produced in the uh, subject that was a experimental mouse so when dnp was injected no antibodies were formed but when the scientist injected this bovine serum albumin bsa then anti bsa antibodies were produced and next time when he combined the dinitrophenol with the bovine serum albumin and when he injected that combined form that conjugate form then what did he see was that there was production of the anti dnp antibody plus anti bsa antibody earlier when dnp was injected only then no antibody were formed but when the conjugate was injected then anti dnp antibody plus anti bsa antibody both were formed so this is the whole concept of the hapten now if uh, if a subject is having these both these antibodies and if we inject the hapten like only dnp then this dnp will be able to combine to this antibody anti dnp antibody but this anti dnp antibody is not produced by this dnp okay this is produced by this conjugate of uh, dnp uh, plus bsa okay so this is the whole concept of the hapten now what is the reason behind this that uh, although uh, all the haptens are non immunogenic what is the reason behind that non immunogenicity the reason behind is that the haptens are unable to bind to the mhc proteins they are unable to bind to the mhc proteins now uh, when we will be reading the immune response then you will understand the concept of the mhc proteins here i will tell you in small uh, i mean in short time what is the concept of this mhc protein so whenever some antigen enters in our body this antigen is engulfed by the apcs A apcs are the antigen presenting cells such as the macrophages the dendrite cells and the b cells these are the three principal uh, antigen presenting cells in our body now when this uh, antigen is engulfed by a when this antigen when this wait when this antigen is engulfed by this uh, apc this apc then what happens this apc is has mhc molecules over the uh, over their surface and these what what do they do is that these apcs present these um, these apcs present the antigens over their mhc molecules okay these so make the antigen with purple so that it becomes easy so uh, these apcs will present this antigens over their mhc molecules okay they will present this over their mhc molecules to the t cells to the t cells so they will be presenting to the t cells now and then further immune response happens now if this uh, hapten if this is a hapten and it is not able to bind to the mhc proteins then how will this apcs will present this uh, hapten to the t cells that means these uh, antigens these haptens will not be able to be uh, i mean uh, they cannot be presented to the t cells because they are unable to bind to the mhc molecules of the apcs that means there will be no immune response further hence there is no immunogenicity because these haptens are not able to bind to the mhc molecules 
hence they cannot be presented to the t cells and therefore no immune response is seen with the heptens that means there is no immunogenicity of the heptens okay so that's the reason behind the non immunogenicity of the heptens now what is the types of heptens the there are two types of heptens one is the complex hepten and the simple heptens the complex are the polyvalent heptens and they precipitate with the specific antibodies while the simple heptens are univalent there is single epitope and they cannot precipitate with the specific antibodies so remember complex can precipitate complex can precipitate and they are polyvalent cpp okay it is the cpp complex polyvalent precipitate now what is a epitope here i told you that simple heptens are univalent that means they are they have single epitope but what is the meaning of the epitope we know that all the antigens bind to the that all the antigens bind to the antibodies with some uh, specific sites over their surface now that specific small area over the antigen by which that antigen bind to the target cell or target antibody that area is called as the epitope okay suppose this is a big uh, antigen this is a big antigen we have but this big antigen also have a small area like this this has a small area like this by which it it is going to bind to a antibody or to a by which it is going to bind to a antibody or to some other uh, cell now this area this area by which it is going to bind this area by which it is going to bind to the antibody or uh, uh, for that matter any cell that area of the antigen is called as the epitope see here i have written also that the small area on the antigen which possesses the specific chemical structure that is capable of sensitizing an immune site and binding to antibody or t cell receptor is called as the epitope so by this area this uh, epitope uh, this antigen bind to the antibody or the t cell receptor and induce the immune response that is smaller area with specific chemical structure is called as the epitope this uh, definition may be asked in vivas and in the uh, university exams as well please remember the definition now what are the factors which affect the immunogenicity we see that when uh, different types of antigens are uh, brought into contact with our immune system then different types of uh, immune responses are seen sometimes the immune response is very high sometimes it is very low then what are the factors which are affecting this immunogenicity or which are governing this uh, response immune response okay in our body so there are different factors which are governing the immunogenicity number one factor is the size of the antigen now if the size of the antigen is bigger that means it will have more epitopes more epitopes means more amount i mean different types of antibodies will be formed that means the immune response will be more higher with respect to size so size is directly proportional to immune response okay then chemical nature we have seen that proteins are more immunogenic than carbohydrates which is more immunogenic than lipids remember this uh, you know this sequence that proteins are more immunogenic than carbohydrates and carbohydrates are more immun immunogenic than lipids then foreignness so foreignness means the immunogenicity is directly proportional to phylogenetic distance that means a uh, antigen from a chimpanzee will be less antigenic to us than a uh, antigen from a uh, say for that matter say a dog okay because the chimpanzee is more closer to us phylogenetically than the dog that means we are more closer since hence the immunogenicity from a chim uh, from a antigen from the chimpanzee will be less than the antigen than the immunogenicity which is seen with a antigen from a dog okay so that's how the immunogenicity also depends upon the foreignness of the antigen uh, that means the immunogenicity is directly proportional to phylogenetic distance then structural complexity so more complex is the antigen more uh, immune response will occur there then the dose of antigen now dose of antigen is also governing this immunogenicity more is the dose more will be the immune response then route of uh, antigen entry so if the entry is occurring by the intravenous route there will be more immune response because it is directly uh, entering into the blood stream then multiple antigens together of course there will be more immune response okay so these are the different types of factors which are affecting the immunogenicity may be asked in the uh, university exam so please prepare for it okay then uh, a definition may be asked that is the adjuvants what are adjuvants adjuvants are the substances which enhance the immunogenicity of an antigen now 
you will understand it with an example we initially in our uh, national immunization had uh, you know the uh, diphtheria and tetanus toxoid together we were uh, giving the diphtheria and tetanus together but later on the scientists found that when we add the uh, the you know the pertussis component in that uh, diphtheria and tetanus toxoid vaccine then the immunogenicity of the diphtheria and the tox tetanus toxoid also increases okay that means the pertussis here acts as the here acts as the adjuvant for the diphtheria and the tetanus toxoid vaccines so hence after that we started giving the dpt vaccine that means diphtheria pertussis tetanus together so here in the dpt vaccine the pertussis component act as the adjuvant for the diphtheria and the tetanus toxoid components of the dpt okay so this is the meaning of the adjuvants here the pertussis component is acting as the adjuvant okay so please remember the definition of the adjuvant that is the substance that enhances the immunogenicity of an antigen okay so that's all about the first part of the antigen rest part we'll see in the second part of the antigen